Normally when I need to replace a sprinkler valve, it's mostly one or two or maybe five or six, but 17? Yep, that's what I did this week on a job and I'll show you how I did it coming right up. So I got a call. This guy says he has a couple of sprinkler valves that are leaking pretty bad and that water was running down the street and he didn't know how to deal with it. When I arrived, I saw 17 Hunter inline sprinkler valves split between four manifolds in these PVC valve boxes. Right off the bat, I saw that the original installer did two no-nos. One, he stuffed five valves in two of the valve boxes. That's too many. In these 12 inch boxes, you shouldn't have more than four valves in there because you want to be able to access the screws on all valves so you can take the valves apart in the future as needed. When you have five in there, the left and right valves are under the lip of the box and you can't get at them. The other two boxes had three and four valves respectively. The other thing the installer did that he shouldn't have is he installed the drip tubing under the heavy wheat cloth. Now no one knows where the tubing is and you can't inspect the tubing or emitters periodically. The owner had already dealt with some breaks before I arrived and it was tough for him to find and repair the tubing. These valves are installed about 20 years ago, and they are Hunter's now obsolete HPV 1-inch valves. You can see the difference here between them. The HPV has these large Phillips screws, where the new PGV valve has these hex screws. Another difference is the diaphragm. Here's the HPV diaphragm on the left and the PGV diaphragm on the right. Much simpler design now. I found that almost all of them were either leaking internally or externally. So now I look like Dr. Sprinkler with my stethoscope. So now I'm going to use my stethoscope and listen to the valves in here. So I definitely heard water flowing through number 10 and through number 11. The rest I'm not sure. But here's my take on the whole thing. Most of these are leaking internally or externally. The ones that were leaking internally were allowing water to bleed out to the sprinkler lines and that was the reason for the water running down the street. Some of them that were leaking externally had been doing so for so many years that they had fibrous roots enveloping them. My MO is to repair what I can when it makes sense. But in this case, with so many gone bad, and the fact that they were an obsolete valve, and you can't technically get parts for them anymore, it only made sense to go ahead and replace them all. Fortunately, the owner was already prepared for that and okay with it. Here's a teachable moment. In most cases, the rule of thumb for me for replacing inline valves is at least one hour per valve at my hourly rate. If the soil or environmental conditions are difficult, including nearby trees or shrubs guaranteeing massive roots or super hard soil, or rocky soil, then I need to add more hours. I typically charge a unit price for the anticipated valve plus fittings and watertight wire nuts for the materials. This keeps things simple, quick, and easy to calculate right there on the spot. I still normally charge T&M for the job, so this is only an estimate. So with that, you can get an idea of what his estimate was for 17 valves. I returned a couple of weeks later and found he dug up part of the area, so I got out my shovels and we worked on it together. I got the rightmost valve box dug up and worked on replacing the valves while he continued to dig up the other boxes. After I got the first manifold rebuilt, 
I saw that I couldn't proceed with the next manifold with him still digging, so I grabbed my shovel again and we both worked on it until it was all dug up. By then, it was time to hit the road. At least it was all dug up and ready for me to replace the rest of them the next day. A word on the construction of these manifolds. The water supply originates here at this 1 inch PVB and the 1 inch PVC pipe continues to the back side of each manifold where there are 1 inch T's and male adapters leading into the 1 inch valves. After the valve though it reduces using these 1 inch by 3 quarter inch male adapters then 3 quarter inch pipe out to the system. This is poor installation practice. On a property this size, the piping should have been kept at one inch out to the lawns, then reduced incrementally. That would have allowed more water flow and allowed more heads on each line, which would have reduced the number of valves needed for the job. Another thing is the drip line should have been PVC running from the valve out to the beds the drip tubing belongs in, and that is the place the PVC should have converted to tubing. This keeps the water flow rate and pressure higher and protects the water supply to the bed. <laughs> Day 2 On the first manifold, the pipes were exposed enough for me to pull the elbowed assembly back out of the way on each line so I could install the valves, then pop the pipe right back in with a short pipe extension. But today, that wasn't going to happen, so I went to my supplier on the way to the job site and picked up 10 slip fixes. I normally only stock two or three three-quarter inch slip fixes at a time. You can see the slip fixes in action in the short I created linked below and above. This job is featured in that short. I avoid using slip fixes, but when there isn't a viable solution, then I think they're great. By the way, all these fittings, valves, tools featured in this and my other videos can be purchased on my resources site linked below. The slip fixes are on there too. When I am rebuilding a valve manifold, I do as much of the assembly work as possible on my tailgate, so I can stand and avoid any more time on my knees as possible. Well, after the two five-valve manifolds got rebuilt, then there was just one left to do. Oh, a note about the five-valve manifolds. I originally was planning to get the next size up boxes for those, called a jumbo box, but I decided not to because the two boxes would have been overlapping for space. Hey, you move over. You move over. You move over. You. And I would have needed to carve them up to make them fit. Hey! and I decided to simply turn the left and right valves on each manifold inward a bit so that screws would be accessible if needed. Okay, the last manifold is for the drip lines, and I did some improvements on this manifold. First, I replaced the 20 PSI pressure regulators with 30 PSI regulators. The owner said he noticed the difference in performance afterwards. The other reason for replacing them is that old pressure regulators sometimes separate at the seam and leak or squirt water out. The next improvement was replacing the glued insert adapter with the threaded assembly that I've shown in my drip videos. This way, when it's time to replace the tubing or if the valve assembly needs to be worked on, this can be simply unscrewed. I extended the tubing so they had some slack now instead of being stretched like they were before. Ta-da! There you have it. The owner said he'd bury them, so I don't have a photo to show of the finished product, but let's use one of the original ones to wrap this up. Remember, you can purchase pretty much everything you saw in this video on the resources site. Thank you for your purchases there. I appreciate it very much. And remember to check out the free downloads using the link below. I have a wide range of things that can help you with your irrigation work. If you found this helpful, let me know in the comments section. What was your largest valve replacement job? 
and what brand and valve models were the old and new ones. Thanks for watching. See you next time.